Pastoralists, life revolves around mobile livestock systems. Pastoralists depend on their intimate knowledge of their typically hostile environment for the well-being of their livestock. The environment demands a nomadic lifestyle, which in turn means that women and children may often be left behind by their pasture-hunting males. Other families may migrate together whenever there is drought. Given this context, the distinct role differences that govern the relationships between men and women among pastoralist setups may be varied to suit the need for survival. The pastoral life system is not a commercial system. It is a way of life that involves people moving around from place to place in search of pasture and water. Northeastern Kenya has some of the driest counties in the country. Garissa is the capital town of both Garissa County and northeastern Kenya. It is a market town, located on the Tana River, about 374 kilometers east of Nairobi. Garissa's landscape is mostly arid, desert terrain, and is the geographical gateway to the interior of northeastern Kenya. Tana River is a vital resource for northeastern Kenya and plays a vital role in the livestock value chain. It also ensures that communities in the surrounding area have a key water source for food production and security. The county harbors the largest livestock market in East and Central Africa. Animals from as far as Somalia, Ethiopia, Isiolo and Mandera converge in this livestock market. It is a hub in the ongoing humanitarian food aid program to the northeast of Kenya. Despite its aridity, Northeastern Kenya has high potential for livestock production and is home to different types of livestock, ranging from cattle, goats, sheep and camels. Pastoralists are adapting within their existing resource constraints. As a result, camels are becoming more important. Donkeys are kept for loading and transport. Irrigated agriculture is possible along the permanent rivers. Among the farm produce is livestock fodder, which is high in demand and fetches good prices during dry seasons. When the drought is at its peak in Gariza, we sell a, a bell for as much as 600 shillings. When I talk of a bell, a bell costs a, a weighs like an average of 14 kg. The Kenya Drylines Livestock Development Program, KDLDP, operates in the districts of Garissa, Wajir, Mandera, Ijara in northeastern Kenya, and Tana River in the coast region, helping pastoralist households to enhance household incomes and attain food security. The program, funded through the USAID Kenya Mission, seeks to support the pastoralists attain resilience with the highly variable climatic conditions they live in, to diversify their livelihood by integrating other livelihood activities such as livestock trading, value addition on livestock products such as milk, meat, hides, skins and bones, and agro-pastoralism. The program supports the equal empowerment of men, women, children, as well as the youth. KDODP, as we know it, is a livestock value chain program which means it addresses issues of the producer, in this case, the pastoral system we deal with, the marketing links in between, all the way to the processor and the consumer. The key partner is CNFA, 
who are the main agreement holders with the USAID. We also have the Kenya Livestock Marketing Council as a key partner and we have the Agricultural Markets Development Trust, in short AGMAC. KLMC has responsibility for market access, while AGMAC's mandate is fodder production for increased livestock productivity through production, conservation and commercialization of fodder and to develop livestock and farm input supply systems through support to agrovets. We formed the Kenya Livestock Marketing Council 12 years ago as an advocacy uh, organization which will articulate pastoral issues to, to the country and the policy planners at large. AGMAC is a partner in KDLDP and uh, our, our mandate or our focus within the project is uh, fodder production for increased, uh, increased uh, livestock production through fodder and uh, to develop the capacity of the agrovets. Through KDLDP support, we have improved from trading only in Saka to trading in Garissa and now to Nairobi. KDLDP brings in volunteers, retired or serving professionals from the U.S. on short-term assignments to provide training and technical assistance along the livestock value chain, working with pastoralist and women's groups throughout the program area, as well as processors, buyers and policy makers in and around Nairobi and Kenya's coastal market cities. Farmer to Farmer program has been very helpful in my assessment because of what we have seen, the changes that it has brought with the organizations that we have worked with. We had uh, a link with volunteers who came and uh, did a study, a pilot study on our procurement process systems, our marketing. And one of the major issues which uh, they pointed out very clearly is our sustainability of supplies of beef mutton and go to export and local markets. We target their assistance in areas where we expect to build the capacities of the hosting organizations. The program, which is funded through the USAID through a Farmer to Farmer Leader with Associates Award, focuses on the entire livestock value chain and has five principal themes. One, enhancing livestock trade and marketing. Two, adding value to livestock products. Three, increasing livestock productivity and competitiveness. Four, supporting a more favorable policy environment for the industry. And five, promoting strategies for mitigating the effects of climate change. My work is to serve the locals and to provide security for their property and to support them in facilitating development projects. Socio-cultural norms and low literacy levels inhibit people, like youth and women, from engaging in the real livelihood systems. The program is keen on navigating these hurdles to ensure that gender and youth concerns are mainstreamed throughout all five program areas. Our religion does not permit a woman to be a chief. Because of their religious beliefs, people had not accepted me as the government representative. It's pastoralism and it's male-dominated. But then again, when the guys go out with the animals, they leave the ladies behind who need to be trained, who need to be capacity built. Having people to change, telling them this is the way we should do this, you can use this kind of system, we can use this kind of methodology, is really tough. It's really, really tough. Livestock marketing is one of the key solutions for improving pastoral household income. By addressing the challenges that impede the development of efficient and vibrant marketing activities in the region, the vulnerability of pastoral households to drought and other climatic shocks is significantly reduced. This market is the one that provides animals beef animals to the whole of Nairobi. I normally buy cattle from this market in Garissa town and transport them to Nairobi and Mombasa. The ones I take to Nairobi, I supply to slaughterhouses. The cattle transported to Mombasa 
are kept in a ranch for a period of time for fattening and they are later exported to other countries. This program tries to link the producer with the markets, the nearest market. Let's not forget the nearest market could be even across the border, across the district and often across national borders. The livestock value chain is the continuum from the production sites to the marketing sites to the consumption end of livestock and livestock products. Some of the key players in the value chain include loaders, transporters and brokers. In the past, the pastoralist typically benefited with very little, an estimated 40 to 45 percent of the consumer price at the Garissa market. We used to do sheep and goat marketing only with the meager resources of group contributions. We were on a low rate and now we are on a medium and up to high rate. Initially, we used to buy 10 herds of cattle, but now we are buying 30 herds of cattle and we have also changed the market chain and we are now trading in regional markets and national markets. We have seen profits in the livestock business. We used to stay at home and wait for our husbands to provide food for us and our children. Nowadays, we come to the market and we buy livestock, we sell and then make a profit. The District Livestock Marketing Council gave us a grant of 100,000 shillings to buy livestock, which we sell in the market and the group has really benefited. We've got the brokers in between who comes in and benefit so much from there. What the pastoralists have undergone from one drought to another. I work in this market as a broker. I get bigger shares in camel sales, followed by cattle, goats and sheep. The project seeks to enhance livestock trade and marketing, partly through its support to district livestock marketing councils in the districts. The current membership in the five districts stands at about 10,800 members as individuals or in groups and include members like livestock traders, businessmen, transporters, as well as butchers and value addition groups involved in livestock products. We are working closely with the local governments who own the livestock sale yards and those sale yards, they collect revenue for the services rendered. In, the in TLMC, we have so many activities. One of them is the loading ramp where we are now standing. We normally collect a cess fee of 30 shillings per head of cattle. 15 goes to the municipal council and 15 to the district livestock marketing council. It is important that that income is ploughed back for infrastructure development. These are all pastoralists? These are all pastoralists, and this is their livelihood. As you can see, it's not a market, it's just something like a playground. It's not fenced, it's not built well. There's no water, no facilities, no services rendered. We have seen uh, an improvement in uh, uh, the, the, the market business because the the LMS, they are able to conduct uh, their business in a more organized way. Uh, that is uh, control also the, the activities of the brokers. We have formed what is called... Like we have formed what is called LMA, Livestock Marketing Association, to look after the market. The challenges of the market, the opportunities, everything. We have trained them on lobbying and advocacy, leadership, governance, and I think they are fighting for themselves now. Producers, traders and consumers need to have information to understand how to manage a livestock industry. Access to market information equips players in the value chain with the knowledge they need to participate in and influence the value chain. Through the KDLDP program, weekly radio livestock market bulletins are ongoing to replace the outdated and less effective posting of market information on billboards. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته دي سالمير البعد جوكتان هل كان يواسقاشن لبيع سقال وجيه كومينيتي راديو Our frequencies reach 240 km squared uh, We reach the entire Wajia town and it is outskirts, it is environs Programs that are sponsored by Kenya Livestock Marketing We get uh, approximately 30 callers Kenya uh, Livestock Marketing has a personnel on the ground who has uh, gathers the information from one market to another if you want to join us in the program, the number to call is 0202 60 75 83.
The program supports a 45-minute call-in talk show with Wajir Community Radio, facilitated by the Kenya Livestock Marketing Council. The talk focuses on the KDLDP program and specifically on the mandate of the DLMCs and was broadcast in both Somali and Burana languages. KDLDP also collaborated with USAID-funded G-Youth program in radio program to discuss business opportunities, especially for the youth in the region. Those who are in Wajia town and are not aware of the price of the market, want to know the price of the market. Those who are outside Wajia town, uh, especially in the rural areas and want to bring their animals to the market, before they take the risk of bringing their animals to the market and then coming, going back with them, they, they wish to inquire first of all the price. Before, we didn't know the prices of cattle, but nowadays we have mobile phones and a radio station where we get market information. The radio talks about the market prices every week and we get to know prices in all major towns like Nairobi. The places where the radio frequency reaches get the information quickly. Coffee, community-owned finance institution, is a community locally owned and managed finance institution developed along the SACO model, which has successfully been widely used in Kenya. The Kofi SACO is a new initiative of KDLDP and has been registered with the Ministry of Cooperative Development and Marketing to specialize in offering Sharia-compliant financial services to pastoral communities and related small business entrepreneurs on a permanent, sustainable basis. We also are working strongly to make them have access to a financing source they can call their own. The last 104 years since the introduction of the cooperative movement in Kenya, the pastoralist communities, who happen majority to be Muslims, are not actively involved in the movement. The, the reason being their faith and belief systems were not taken into consideration. Financial services are a powerful tool in terms of wealth creation and economic growth. With access to financing, producers are able to get loans and advances to operate in local or even export markets. KDLDP utilizes two main instruments to help producers access financial services. One, community-owned financing institution. Two, matching investment grants. Many pastoralist communities did not get the opportunity to access financial institutions. We are going to be operational in, for our start, Mandera, Wajia, Garissa, and Tana River counties. Uh, we will ask each county to, to register at least 500 members. Then we open a branch for them, and coffee will remain the umbrella at national level.